Hello, class. Um, welcome to another recording. And I need to, I'm going to start doing the recording for chapter four. And I started the chapter four briefly. Remember that time most of you were kind of tired. And I talk about moment. So chapter four is talk about moment. We'll talk about other things as well, how to find moment, result, and moment. Because moment is also a vector quantity. And of course, when you say moment, I mean moment of a force. It's also a vector quantity. So this chapter, the textbook label it as a force system resultant. Force system resultant. It's not only about moment. There's something else we'll look at, which we are also looking at its resultant. That's why the test would like to call it force moment resultant. So we'll look at scalar formulation in terms of when you are looking at moment of force and vector formulation. And then we take moment by point. Later, we also take moment by an axis. Then there's a type of moment called couple. We look at it. Then we'll talk about distributed load. We also talk about distributed load. As I said, we we'll always be uh, turning things, removing nails, and here and there. So we always kind of apply some moment. And as some of you know, moment of a force or moment is the turning effect of the force. So when you apply a force to something to turn things around, okay, you are causing the whatever to, if you are causing to remove, you end up causing it to turn. <coughs> and I said before opening some Coke or Fanta or some bottle before, and in all these cases, we are applying some kind of moment, okay? In order to cause the lid to kind of open, it will rotate kind of clockwise or counterclockwise, depending on whether you are closing or closing or removing it. So we <coughs> talk about moment. We talk about moment. Let me pause a bit and get some water. Okay, so we talk about moment of a force as, as you all know from your physics or high school, as is the force and distance. And most of the time we emphasize that is the perpendicular distance. Okay, is the perpendicular distance. So as you apply a force here, F, and if this is 90 degrees here, yeah, and this is the line of action of the force, yeah? That's the line of action of the force. And it's perpendicular to this. So we can take moment about this point O. Strictly speaking, you are taking moment about this as So you can push this to rotate that way about the axis Z. But it's like we are taking moment about the point O. So moment is the force, moment about O is the force time the moment arm or the perpendicular distance. It's like the moment arm. This is all in 2D. When you do moment, we have to sometimes talk about the sense of the moment. Okay? The sense of the moment. Whether you go, it's, it, there's a tendency to cause the object to go in a 2D, we say this way. Uh, <laughs> Isn't it this way or that way? So I did the same thing. Okay. This way or that way. In the textbook, textbook uses the counterclockwise as positive. So this one's and then the clockwise as negative. But it's, it's there's a question mark. It's not necessarily true. It's a conversion. So if somebody can also choose the other way around. Clockwise as positive, counterclockwise as negative. Now, if in this same problem here, let me clean the screen a bit. In this same problem, you have another force F2. That is it line of action is passing through the point O. Then F2 will not have moment because there's no any distance. It will have a force magnitude, but it will not have any moment about O. Okay? And then, instead of saying D is zero, another way to put it is that its line of action goes to the point O. If the force is acting at an angle, okay, it's not perpendicular. What do what do we do? you have to draw a line from this point, okay? So that the force, it meets the force or the line of action of force at 90 degrees, okay? And then as we know this D, you can resolve and find the this distance, this D sin theta, and you multiply by F, okay? And that's what we will do. But another way to look at it is that you resolve and you resolve the force into two, this force F3, okay? into cosine theta and sine theta. And then one of them will be perpendicular, the other one will pass through O, then to not have moment. And that's what is written here, 
Okay, that's what it's written here. If we have more than one force, or you have more than one moment acting the body, then we have to add them. Okay, so here you have M1, M2, you just have to add them. But you have to take their sense into account. That is the, 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 the rotational effect that is having can be all on one side, or it can be opposite, or they are going in different direction. So some of them will be positive, some of them will be negative. And as I said in class, I don't know anything about negative, positive. I always take one side as positive, the other side as negative. The textbook uses the counterclockwise as positive and then the clockwise as negative. So we have to, we can work the resultant moment, okay? So you can, in this is 2D, so you can say summation of moment about the point of interest equal to them, you add them. Or you can just say moment about, oh, you add them. So that's what I've done here. So this is taking the counterclockwise as positive. So if you look at F1, the, let's say the perpendicular distance from O is D1. So it's causing the, it's going to go this way. So that if you, that, you take that as positive, F3 is also going the same way. It's only F2 that will try to turn the object, whatever it is, the opposite. That's why it's negative. So, but somebody can also write it as this way. M0 equal to F2 D2 minus F1 D1 minus F3 D3. It's also right. It's also right. It depends on which side is your positive and which side is your negative when you are finding it. The, whatever you put beside the answer is most important. So I'll do a couple of examples. 2D, everything you are doing here is scalar formulation. Scalar formulation, 2D, scalar formulation. When we are doing 3D, it's better to use vectors. So we use the vector formulation. So I'll do a few examples here. So I'm going to switch to my white screen and I'll do those examples there. Let's start with the first one. We did this one in class, but let me quickly go through. So moment about O, find the resultant moment, but there's only one force. I'm not going to use clockwise or counterclockwise. I'll just write. So moment about O is equal to force times distance. Okay, we are, this is 90 degrees, we are zooming. So it's 100 times two. And this is equal to 200 newtons. Newton's meters, of course. But whatever you write here is what I'm interested. It's going to turn the thing this way. So then you put this one beside for me. You see, and that's where I want it. Let's come to the next one. Example B. Moment about O is equal to. We have two forces now. You can take each of them in that. So I'll do this in about two ways. So let's take, for example, the 30. The 30 Newton's is turning this way. So Meet I write this this side with my positive. If I write that one first, times one. This will be turning the object, the 50 newtons will be turning the object in the opposite direction. So minus 50 times 0 0.75. And this is equal to let me, I have a calculator here, so let me do that. Um 30 times one minus 50 times 0 0.75. Okay, let's see. I'm, I'm having like um, 7.5. If these numbers are wrong, then let me know 7.5. Okay, um, the lighting system here. So is this also new change meters? But this answer is because I chose this as my positive and that was this way. It means this answer is going that way. And it's also correct. Assuming somebody decide to do the other one first. Okay. Assuming somebody decide to do the other one first. Um, difficult. If you decide to do the other one first, the moment about O will be 50 times 0 0.75. Minus 30 times one. This is also correct. But this answer will end up to be 7.5 Newton meters. But because you did this one first, the answer will be like this. And anytime, let me put this one in some red here. This answer here, this answer here can also be written as 7.5 Newton meters 
Then you flip the direction. Instead of this way, you flip it like this. And this answer and this answer now become the same. So what is your positive direction? It, it depends on what you choose. So what some people would rather say, they will write a sign down that, oh, they, and the textbook is counterclockwise. Let's do that. So they will use this as your positive. So you write a counterclockwise first, and then you do that. But I'm not really interested in the way you start. I want, I'm interested in the way you end, the way you report the answer. That's what of interest. So I don't write any sign, but when I finish, I write my sign beside it. And that's the way I want you to work. Let's look at the next example. Um, what I'm, everything I'm doing here is uh, on the, I'm kind of having some challenge here in terms of the screen. Let me do a bit of something. Yes, okay, cool. Cool. Um, I was finding it difficult to move the screen. So I'm moving to the right-hand side. I have the examples lined up. So let's look at this one. So here, some distance have been done for you already. Okay, if you want to get to know how did they get this? If you look at this, this is it's like you use the same thing where the angle is cosine. Okay, so this is like the hypotenuse, and that is adjacent, and that is the angle. So this distance here from here to here is two cosine 30, 30 degrees. Okay. There are two forces here. One is 100, 100 is acting on, at zero. So if you want to do the resultant moment, so resultant moment about O, or you can say moment about O, resultant, any of them is fine. So sometimes I do like this. Or you can also see, say summation of moment about O, any of them is fine. So resultant moment about O is equal to, let's take this one first. The 40 newtons is going down. So from all the way from here to here is the perpendicular distance. So it's 40 times four add two cosine 30 degrees. Okay, and then we come to this. You don't even need to write because it's going to be 100 times zero because each line of action is going to the point that you want to take the moment. Okay, then use the calculator to work this out. Um, we can write in decimal or we can leave it that way. Normally, I don't really mind answers that much. So let me write the answer in decimal. So 40 bracket 4 plus 20 cosine 30. Close, close. Okay, so that is the answer in like decimal 229.2. I write to you about two decimal two eight, and it's pound dot feet. That is pound dot feet. Pound dot feet. Okay, so I'll do the next example. Let me do the next example. In this next example, we have about. Oh, sorry, I didn't do something important. You have to tell me the sign, and it was this is going to so this have to be here. Is very, very important. The next example, that is D. We have about one, two, three, four. In fact, these 20 newtons and 40 newtons, <laughs> after it was diagonal, diagonal, and it had been resolved into two. We will get there. It's, it had been resolved into two. That's why you see them acting at the same point. So let's start. Moment about O, or the resultant moment about O, I don't know how best I normally write this. I used to have a star. So moment about resultant moment about O. I think this is good. The result R for resultant. And this is the code. Which one do you want us to do first? Let's start with the 50. So if you start with the 50, then it's 50 times the perpendicular distance, which is two. Then we go to the 60. The 60 will not have moment. It's just it does, it's not plus, it's not minus, because it's zero. Because each line of action goes to the point O, so it will not have moment. Then we go to the 20. We go to the 20. The 20 is going to turn, this one This one was turned the object that way. The 20 is going to turn the object this way. 
if you can look at it very well. I, have, I used to have a student, oh, Jessica. She said she was not getting it. So he said, okay, so instead of saying the 20 is pulling, can we say it's pushing it? Yes, exactly, because it's still on the line of action. So it's like it's pushing it. So if it's pushing it, then it's going to cause it to rotate this way. Okay, so it's opposite to this, the, our positive side. So this will be minus. So it's minus 20 times, minus 20 times uh, this distance from here to here. So you have to do a bit of resolving. Look at this. The, here, the hypotenuse is three meters and that. So this distance here will be the cosine and that distance will be the sine. So this will be like three sine 30. And this will be three cosine 30. Yeah, so you, I don't want to say we resolve distance, yes, but you can also resolve distance. It's like you're doing your Sokatua stuff. Okay. So the distance, perpendicular distance is 20 times three. I would not really worry about getting the, uh, using the calculator so that we can save some time. Then the 40 is going to turn the object this way. So that is plus, let, uh, um, let me see whether if I have a space, I can write it on the left. Then so it's plus. 40 times, so from here to here is three cosine 30, and from here to here is four. So this will end up to four plus three cosine 30 degrees. And you just use the calculator. But, but whatever you get, whether it's negative or positive is correct. But remember we took this as our positive. So write this beside whatever answer you are getting, and then use the calculator. Um, there is another problem I want to solve, but I want to make sure I can put the video in your WhatsApp. So let me end this video and I'll record the next one. And I'll solve another, maybe two, two problems or one problem for on the 2D. Then my next or third video will be on uh, the 3D, uh, 3D or vector formulation. So let me end the video here and uh, bye-bye.